Um, let's focus on another story uh, for now. Now, the National Assembly has passed the uh, long-awaited carbon tax bill, which is expected to come into effect this year. Joining us to give us a picture of the scope and the impact of the bill is Louis Boetta, who is the associate in the tax and exchange control practice at Cliff Decker Hofmeyer. Louis, thanks so much for your time. Um, so this bill, when it's coming into effect in, in June, June, to be yeah. exact. Correct. Right. Uh, net positive or a not so positive for the economy given the state of the economy right now? Probably considering uh, all the taxes that are already in place, uh, the economic condition now, the perception amongst a lot of people that this is not a tax that is necessarily aimed at, at um, promoting or preventing further climate change but is actually another method for Treasury to gain revenue it's probably not perceived as the most positive thing at, at, at this point in time. I mean, how much revenue uh, would or was Treasury uh, thinking it could get once this, this uh, tax comes into effect? It's not clear exactly. I mean, a, a number of, uh, the tax will affect a number of industries and so on. And if, if you look at it, the tax, has been in, or the, the tax has been in the pipeline for quite a number of years. About 2011, I think, the process started. So we'll only really see how much revenue will be generated by it once it comes into effect also because the number of companies and industries and so on affected by it, well, the industries, industries are specified, by the, but the actual number of companies that will be affected remains, remains to be seen. I mean, we, we had the, um, the chair of the manufacturing circle, who was also the CEO of NAMPAC on the show earlier this week, and he was talking about the fact that the manufacturing sector in itself could not stomach such a tax at this stage, mm. given the fact that, you know, it's a, such dire straits. Uh, do you see this being the case for most other businesses? The, let, let me start with the positive before, I move, before, we, before we look at the actual right. effect. So, so, so the one thing that we have to take into account is that they're going to follow a so-called phase-in approach. For the first few years, the first, the, the first three-year phase, the tax is going to uh, effectively be a maximum of 6 rand to 48 rand per tonne of CO2 emissions above the threshold. Yeah which means that uh, it, it's not going to be the full amount of 120 rand per tonne of CO2 emissions. So, so from that perspective, uh, in the first few years, companies will be able to mitigate that. Mm. There are also a number of allowances that, that are provided for. Um, and then in, in terms of actual reporting and so on, they'll only have to pay you know, a while after the tax has come into effect. Um, so it, it remains to be, seen what, to be seen what the actual effect will be. Obviously, I don't, for entities that are already facing economic pressure and mm. so on, it's not ideal. It's not sure. ideal, I, I imagine. Yeah. No, but as lawyers, I mean, what's, what's your interest in, in, in the, this bill and the manner in which it's implemented and the effect that it could have on the economy? Well, there, there, are, there are two main things. I think, I think firstly, there's the administrative burden because now it's an additional tax uh, that has to be administered, an additional tax for which companies have to put new systems in place. Mm. Um, here also, there's quite a complexity in terms of how one measures your carbon emissions. So because a lot of it is based on certain international standards, information from other countries. Um, it, it's quite difficult to measure it, measure, measure it initially, and so the data and, and the way that, that it's measured and what's going to be paid is going to change mm -hmm. over time. So administratively, the, the, there's a big thing. And then secondly, it's, it's obviously the, the payment issue. There's, a, there's another additional tax that's going to have, have to be paid by entities. Yes, they might have known about it, and they might be able to structure their affairs in a way to mitigate the effects. But on top of the other taxes, additionally, it's not, not ideal even though we haven't seen any tax increases in the budget uh, when it was announced on Wednesday. I mean, what's, what's, what's some of the advice that you guys are giving at Cliff, at Cliff Decker there for, for clients who are wanting to, to navigate these complexities? Well, uh, a lot of it was actually uncertain uh, up until now. So to, mm. to just give a little bit of uh, the the first bill was introduced in 2015, sure. followed a series of comments. They then introduced some regulations. There were comments on that. The revised bill was only really introduced towards the end of last year and then tabled, by, oh, sorry, earlier, earlier in, in 2018 and the minister then tabled it last year and it was now passed uh, a few days ago. Mm. So a lot of it was still uncertain up to the point that it was actually that we saw the final bill. Uh, there are still at this stage certain regulations that need to come in which will impact the amount of tax that ent entities will pay. Mm. So it's, it's, it's a matter of being prepared for it. Uh, you know, putting the necessary systems in place yeah. and so on when it, when, it, when it comes into effect. There is still a bit of, a bit of uncertainty because some of the regulations that will impact the calculation of the liability still have to be uh, introduced and published. Sure, wow, I suppose an ongoing conversation, but we'll leave it there Indeed. for now. Thanks so much. Uh, that was Louis Botta, of course, uh, coming from uh, Cliff Decker-Hofmeyer.